Hey everybody, real quick, I want to try to go through this very fast and try to get concise. But I want to address something that Bobby Capuccio, a longtime friend, longtime colleague, and an absolutely brilliant person. I consider you a genius. I consider him a genius. I think he's one of the most intelligent people, brilliant people, especially in our industry. He brought up the, and posted the question relative to brain and mindset. What's the difference? What, what are they? What is the difference? Awesome question. He also brought in the enteric nervous system. So what I'd like to do is I just want to throw some stuff out and I want to expand it because this is something that I'm very excited about, very passionate about, and I've been doing a lot of research, looking at theory, looking at the, the science behind it, and looking at it practically in my own personal training practice. So I want to throw this out to you and just expand this conversation a little bit and thank Bobby for being as awesome as he is. So first off, we talk about the brain. Let me address that. Well, the brain is, if, if I said, where's your brain, you'd point right here. But we know that there's three brains. So based on the criteria that brains have a large number of neurons or ganglia, there's neural cells, inner neurons, there's sensory motor neurons, there's support cells, there's the perceiving and assimilation of information processing, there's memory associated with it, it's complex reflexes, and it has some type of storehouse or chemical warehouse of neurotransmitters and or hormones. So looking at all that, we know that there's a head brain. We also know 100 years ago, in fact, scientifically, that there's a gut brain. So it's not just the enteric nervous system, it's actually an enteric brain because it works and operates independent of the gut, or independent of the head, I'm sorry. And we know within the last 30 years that there's a cardiac brain. So the heart is an actual brain in and of itself that works independent of the head as well. So we have three brains that are considered brains based upon criteria that all make up our system. So if we have three brains, then our stereotypical definition of mind and mindset has to be different because stereotypically and this is in across practices across different health and medical and whatever the mind has never been defined go look where the mind is defined and it's very difficult to find anyone to say because it's always thought of the inner workings of the head brain but there's three brains so if there's three brains and the heart and the gut are very uh, afferent driven and feeding the head brain far more than the head brain feeds them then they have to be involved in the head brain they have to be associated with that so it can't just be here the brain has to now be at least three so I'm gonna say that the brain is the head brain is only a third actually it's what I think a fourth of the whole mindset so the mind is the inter integrated so this is what I say I'll start here. Head, gut, and heart. So we have head, gut, and heart, and those three are the known brains that we have. Now, this whole outside component, I'm going to say the fourth brain is the fascial matrix. This isn't jumping on the fascial bandwagon and all that stuff. The fascia, like it or not, it permeates every tissue in the body. Everything. All, everything we associate, bones, joints, muscles, brain, organs, everything, skin, adipose tissue, it all has a connection to that, which is extremely important, especially when we start talking about what Bobby mentioned with movement. So what I believe is that the brain is a very minimal definition. To say this is the brain of the body is, I think, traditional and stereotypical. I think we have much more information relative to that. So I say that the mind is the head, the gut, and the heart, and the interplay of that with the fascial matrix. The head is the predominator, or it's the dominant organ, or the dominant brain, because it's kind of the, the rational component and it mediates, but it can't do anything without the input of the gut and the heart. Remember, they're extremely emotive and extremely afferent. Now, the fascial matrix is the largest sensory organ that we have in the body. So it has to be feeding information that's important. So that's where I go with four brains. The mindset is made up of the combination and the integration of those four brains that is ruled or over, ruled is not a good word, overseen and mediated by the head brain. And so that's what I'm gonna say is the difference between brain and mindset. The mindset is a compilation of the four and that's how movement is so dramatically influenced. So yes, food can change how, you, how, how your gut, your microbiota is. 
and how your stress levels are, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, whether it's, it's social, whatever the, the stressor is, that will affect your heart brain. Heart rate variability, microbiota in the gut. That affects how the brain thinks and feels and how it interprets and what it's going to interpret because it's getting all that information. Your postures will affect your mindset. Sit in a posture like this for an hour and guess what happens? It changes your mindset. Why? Because your fascial matrix has memory and it's a receptor organ and it's feeding information to the brain. So that's all comp compiled and has to be part of what we consider mindset. So that's my story. Four brains, even though scientifically we haven't seen the fascial matrix as a brain, I think it constitutes all of it. I'm not going to go over that right now. But hopefully in time, we'll come out with some information, and that's what I want to say. So thank you, Bobby. Thank you, everyone. And I just let it rip. Love you. Bye-bye.